Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and Nancy, thank you so much for inviting me into your home and your business there in Homer, Alaska. Not something I have visited before, but it's certainly on my bucket list. Um, I absolutely adore Alaska. It's, Alaska's been on my mind a lot as it's probably been around the, the world with all those earthquakes. So happy that you're safe and well and surrounded by beautiful snow. Um, today, um, we are going to be going over um, the first of our series, um, which we just call Digestion. It's going to be a pretty basic class on why digestion is so important. And um, we are going to be able to have a drawing at the end of this for those of you that are attending uh, for a free functional evaluation. So if you have digestive issues and concerns about how you're doing and what's going on with you, a functional evaluation can really shine the light on places that you might not have thought before. So um, I wanna thank you all for coming today and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. We should last about 30, 35 minutes. <clears throat> I could talk for hours uh, on uh, digestion because it is that vital, but we're gonna just hit some really good key points. Uh, first of all, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Liz Palmer. I'm a functional nutritionist. Um, I got my certification in Olympia, Washington uh, back in the 90s. And I had um, a brain injury that I was unaware of. I was actually the sickest person in my class. And it was because of a brain injury that I had. So this was my before and after. The picture on uh, the right is a picture that was nine years ago. And um, I wanna give everybody in the room and everybody that's listening, the ability to know that you can get well, you can get better, and you can live a long and happy life. Um, my shirt says, um, live happy, and my motto is, Liz happy to live happy. So that's a little bit about me. Let's talk about what the state of health is in the United States, and why what we're gonna be sharing today could be the answer to start your wellness journey. Um, there are 61,000 deaths in the U.S., um, this is according to the CDC, of heart disease. And heart disease actually affected me um, this last month. One of my best friends has an 80% blockage in her, what they call the widowmaker, her coronary artery. And uh, one of my other best friends collapsed a few weeks ago, and she had 99% blockage and had to have a replacement of her um, aorta valve. And these were healthy people that have lived a long and healthy life and they didn't realize. So heart disease is our number one killer. So it's very important that we take care of our health, our digestion, and our heart. Diabetes, um, 1.5 million new cases a year. And I just heard a story yesterday that said that 35% of people that have diabetes aren't even aware that they have it. Um, sometimes you don't even get a symptom. So that 1.5 million may be um, underestimating how diabetes is affecting the United States. Alzheimer's disease is increasing at a very rapid rate, currently the sixth leading cause of death in the USA. Um, chronic digestive disorders, heartburn, IBS, colitis, Crohn's disease, 15, 20 years ago, some of these people had never heard of, and now they're common household names because so many people are affected with these disorders. Um, in the American Cancer Society, 1,735,500 human beings, new people, were diagnosed with cancer in 2018. And many of us have um, had that um, experience within our family or ourselves. I was diagnosed with cancer four years ago. And um, as I was with my friends, I I've always been um, put my health very important. So it was a shocking diagnosis. So um, cancer is a big issue. And now they say that prescription drugs are responsible for more death than illicit drugs. And hospitals, um, going into a hospital can be a very, very risky um, situation with many deaths uh, from common drugs are happening right before our eyes. So um, are drugs the answer to our issue? I would say no, we really need to take care. So um, today, today we're gonna simply go over um, what digestion is and kind of the simple um, facts about digestion. We're gonna talk about the gut health and the bacteria, which of course is part of our gut health. And we're gonna talk about why pH balance is important for gut health. 
So that's what we're going to be kind of reviewing today. Now, when we go over the next series, um, next month, we're going to be going over how digestion affects blood sugar and how blood sugar affects our sleep, because this is a common problem. So make sure you tune in next month as well. So why is digestion vital to our overall health? It's really the cornerstone of our um, health. The United States Drug Administration uh, put out a um, food pyramid, which they've changed regularly. And luckily, this is not um, what our food pyramid looks like, but this is what a lot of our children are taught to um, eat and they're raised on, and many people um, eat in America today. This is not a, want, a way that you eat. All these foods that are on this list are what I call fake foods. They're chemically derived and chemically manufactured. We want you to eat real foods. So why our digest digestion is so important? It, it has to do with so much more than what we consider digestive issues. You know, we always think of constipation and diarrhea and maybe burping as digestion, but we're looking at Acne, rosacea, eczema, skin issues are all about the digestion in the liver, adrenal fatigue, autoimmune issues, malnutrition, uh, brain issues. Uh, the science between our gut and our brain is continuing to show that um, if you have an unhealthy gut, you're going to have an unhealthy brain. And of course, depression, um, anxiety, colitis, Crohn's, colon cancer, um, and then death. There's a book that was written many years ago, Death Begins in the Colon, and that is very true. So without a good digestive system, you are setting yourself up for um, all different types of diseases, disorders, and discomfort in your life. 80%, um, this is a fact that your immune system is in, located in your digestive tract. When I used to work at the health food store, I had, it was a really great example of um, taking a slice of society, because people that were afraid to talk to their doctor were more than happy to talk to a, a rep um, at a health food store. And people had, the most common complaint was digestive disorders, but people would come in with allergies um, so much, seasonal allergies, and it was always about digestion. Uh, it's hard to almost accept, but um, that's what it is. If you have a gut that doesn't work, you're gonna have an immune system that doesn't work either. So what, involve, what organs are essentially involved with your digestive system? The mouth, which is your first um, part of your digestion, um, of course that involves a ch a chewing, and that gets everything going. You have enzymes in your mouth, and those digestive juices start to break down your food. Um, in this fast-paced society, many people gulp their food really fast, and they are not chewing, so they're missing the first step of digestion. So good digestion starts with chewing. Uh, the esophagus, um, that is um, the, where the food is going down the esophagus, the tube, and going into your stomach. The movement of that is called peristalsis, and that kind of movement is like a wave-like movement that gets the food to go down into the stomach. And of course, everybody knows what the stomach is. It's got a little sphincter up at the very top and a sphincter down at the bottom, so it keeps the acid in the stomach. The upper muscles of the stomach um, relax to let the food in, and then the lower muscle is um, tighter and mixes the food with your digestive juices, and it's very, very acidic, so it's breaking down the food, and it only lets that food out when it's ready to go into the small intestine. The small intestine is where peristalsis takes place as well. Again, a wave-like movement that's moving the food through there. And your small intestine is a vital part of your organ that is, um, it's already broken, the food's already been broken down, and your small intestine is starting to absorb it through the walls of the intestine and converting the food into energy for your body. And of course, the large intestine or the colon, uh, the same movement, um, and this is where your food has already been digested and it's making its way out of the system. So any on all of these areas of the body can um, create a digestive dis imbalance. A couple other vital organs, they're not actually to the tube of the digestion, but they're very important in the digestive process. And one is the pancreas. Uh, the pancreas is going to um, create insulin and um, it really measures the need for the amount of sugar that's in your diet. So when we eat a highly refined diet, 
um, we need to create um, more insulin um, in order to get the uh, to break down the, um, the the particles of fat and nutrients uh, glucose into the brain so that's why uh, type 2 diabetes is on the rise because many of us are eating a highly refined carbohydrate diet and of course the liver the liver has over 500 different chemical messengers that it does in our body so um, I could just do a whole thing on a liver, but uh, basically it's a detoxification organ. It has two phases. Phase one, which phases out all your water soluble toxins and phase two, which are fat soluble toxins. Um, it's a very important organ. It can function even when 90% of the liver has been damaged or destroyed. And you may not even have a symptom when you have a liver that is not functioning. So it's important to keep the liver working well. And of course, many people know about the gallbladder. The gallbladder attaches right to the liver and it stores the bile that is created by the liver. Um, and it kind of squirts out the bile um, to break down the food and the fats in the diet. Um, oftentimes people will have their gallbladder removed um, because they may have a gallstone or a gallbladder attack. And it is really important to know if you have had your gallbladder removed to replace the bile that is um, being dripped on the food with a supplement. Um, I take, I have a gallbladder. Um, uh, they wanted to take it many, many years ago, so I had a little weak gallbladder. So I always take a little bit of digestive enzyme with bile in it in order to digest my fats better. So that's a quick overview of our digestive system. Um, this is kind of a, a video, I mean, it shows you where those little gallstones, so many people have this issue, and these gallstones accumulate in your gallbladder, and they can be made out of cholesterol or calcium, and these little gallstones prevent the um, gallbladder from um, putting out the bile, and it, uh, one of those little stones can get stuck in the duct and create that gallbladder attack. So um, this is a kind of a basic, um, definition again of your digestion where your food is going through your mouth down your um, esophagus into your stomach being in, um, injected with a lot of acid breaking it down it's absorbed through your small intestine and eliminated through your large intestine so here's a little view of where those uh, um, organs are um, and this can be a real helpful little thing so you understand the stomach um, that food is breaking down with um, chyme, which is a fluid that your body produces, hydrochloric acid and enzymes. And again, your small intestine, it's broken down and the colon, it makes its way out. So what could go wrong? That is a big question because so many can go wrong. But when your system is out of balance, um, then the rest of you is going to be out of balance. So there are some things that you can do but let's look at some of the things that are common to go wrong with digestion. Uh, constipation and diarrhea. You know, people often think that that's the biggest signal. Um, occasional issues can be related to stress, food, parasites, et cetera, but chronic issues of diarrhea or, and or constipation can be considered irritable bowel syndrome. This is going to start in the ability for your food to digest and not create inflammation in your small intestine and large intestine. Um, the irritable bowel syndrome affects 15% of the uh, world population, not just in the United States, but all around. So this is a big issue. 60% um, of them are female um, and the rest are, are men. And many, many people have to visit the hospitals um, because of irritable bowel syndrome. So it is a big problem in the United States. And it also affects your life greatly. When you have to um, plan your travel around your trips to the toilet, it can be really um, um, invasive into your lifestyle. Heartburn or acid reflux. This is so common now that um, the first thing that you see when you go into a Walmart or uh, a regular grocery store are uh, in the wellness aisle are um, acid blockers. So um, heartburn is considered an irritation to the esophagus where food is going down. And it can be caused by too much acid, I mean not enough acid, which is creating an overabundance of the body trying to create acid and <clears throat> affect the sphincter. So your acid is going up the esophagus where it's supposed to stay down. 
but 40% of the US population suffer from occasional and or chronic heartburn. So this is what you're gonna see out there. And these are all acid blockers. And when you take an acid blocker, you're blocking the most important aspect of your digestion. Your stomach needs um, acid. Um, it's about 1.5 to 2 point on the pH scale. And these medications block the production of stomach acid. If you use these drugs for long term, it increases the risk of bone loss because you're not absorbing your minerals. It also increases the risk of B12 loss. Um, without B12, your uh, cognitive abilities start to diminish, your ability to think straight, etc. A B12 is also important for nerve. Um, you also get an increase of kidney disease, dementia, IBS, diverticulitis, and other gastrointestinal disorders. Um, it's very, very common. Uh, when people used to come into the health food store and ask me, they'd say, I, I have diverticulitis. And the first question I would ask would, were you on um, acid blockers? And many, many times they were. So it can lead to a lot of problems. So these are um, the top three things that really can go wrong with your digestion. There's probably a hundred other things, but these are some of the chronic health conditions that are affecting Americans. So we know what can go wrong, but you know, how do we keep it going right? So just a few lifestyle um, choices to point out. Chew your food slowly. You know, they say that you should chew it until it becomes mush in your mouth. Most people are not gonna do that. Uh, but eat in a relaxed state so you can concentrate on eating. Um, you know, in the beginning times, they used to have dinner over one and a half, two hours and chew your food. Um, nowadays, we eat a meal in 10 minutes and we um, swash it down with cold water. Um, when you're drinking water with your meals, you are diminishing your natural enzymes that are created in the stomach. So don't drink water with your meals. Uh, if you need to drink water, drink warm or hot water. Um, and then, of course, choose your foods wisely. Um, eating highly refined carbohydrates actually take more nutrients from your body than um, it, you're adding. So if you're eating a, a donut with sugar coating, your body's producing more minerals and more vitamins to break that food down that it can create. So it's actually those types of foods deplete your own nutritional stores. So make sure that you have a, a diet well-rounded in good fats, which are your salmon, your, it's prolific up there, um, but your avocado, your salmon, your nuts, your seeds, good quality fats, uh, no refined carbohydrates, so anything white flour, that's a very, very occasional treat, but not something that you wanna add into your regular diet and um, other uh, vegetables. And if you do eat meat, um, there's a you know, big movement toward uh, veganism and vegetarianism now, which if, if that's your choice, just make sure that you have a lot of B12 and you good, get your good balanced fats, um, but not making uh, your meat your main source of um, nutrition, uh, vegetables and fruits. So let's talk about digestive enzymes because they're an important part of staying healthy and well. And um, your digestive enzymes, they are enzymes that break down, you have all different types of enzymes in your body, but digestive enzymes are specific enzymes that break down food in your body. So the large molecule of fuel when added to uh, digestive enzymes break down your molecules into uh, smaller uh, building blocks and your body can absorb them. So when you think about a banana that you leave on the counter um, and after a couple of weeks, um, you, maybe you've gone on vacation, you've come home, that banana is almost gone. So those digestive enzymes have eaten that banana right there. <laughs> and that's similar to what we're eating is that we um, wanna make sure that our foods have good enzymes. Um, enzymes are contained in raw foods. So if you're eating a raw salad every day, you're getting a lot of those. And um, our digestive juices are in our saliva, which I was saying why it's important to chew your food um, for those digestive enzymes. Americans are chronically depleted in digestive enzymes uh, because of our diet, our lifestyles. We eat on the run, we're highly stressed individuals. We don't have that relaxed lifestyle. Um, so digestive enzymes can be a very good part of healing ourselves. In addition to um, your enzymes, 
our bacteria that is in our gut is so vital. Um, you're going to hear more and more um, out there on the microbiome, which is the microbiome is your the makeup of your gut bacteria. You have more gut bacteria than you do cells in the body. So we're really mostly, mostly made up of bacteria. Good bacteria, you know, sometimes we think, ah, oh, bacteria is bad. No, we have good bacteria and we have bad bacteria. So um, in order for bacteria to thrive in the gut, we have to have really good pH. Again, a highly refined diet with um, high refined carbs and a lot of meat, that is very, very acidic, and it's destroying the pH balance. Um, just look at the differences of the pH. Our esophagus is 6.8. Our stomach pH is around 2. Our small intestine is 8. So it's a very complex system. So one way around this is to make sure that we have a diet that is well-rounded and that we keep our pH at a, um, a higher level um, when we're adding foods. Um, and greens are naturally high in uh, high pH, as well as some fruits and vegetables. So this is kind of a video, uh, I mean, a, a little picture of friendly bacteria, um, which we have in our gut, and unfriendly bacteria. Some of you might have heard of Candida albicans, um, path pathogenic bacteria when you get a bacterial infection in your gut. Um, the good bacteria fight that off. So like the L. acidophilus and the bifidum, those are two of our most common um, probiotics that are in our gut, the friendly bacteria. So Nerium, um, which is our company that is sponsoring this talk today, um, have a couple products that are going to deal with these underlying cause of digestive issues, which I'm going to talk about. So um, a probiotic. So when we have gut bacteria that's out of balance, we need to ingest something that is going to start feeding the healthy bacteria. So Miriam has put together a product called Prolistic. There are other products that are on the market, but there's a few reasons why I like the uh, Prolistic, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Um, when you have a good bacteria, a good, a well-balanced bacteria, you're going to have better digestion for sure, um, better skin, brain health. Um, sometimes you can lose weight uh, when you have a good bacteria because you're utilizing your food and your immune function is going to be better. As I showed you earlier, the immune system is very um, prolific in our gut. So the probiotics are the good bacteria that they're feeding. Uh, you can get them in food like yogurt, kombuchas, um, in fermented foods, or you can take them in a pill or a powder form. And what is a prebiotic? So we know what probiotics are. They're good bacteria or pro-bacteria. But what is a prebiotic? A prebiotic is an undigestible dietary fiber that feeds the good bacteria in your gut. It's kind of like fertilizer. Um, some of the foods um, like dandelion greens uh, and himica, those are considered prebiotic. Um, I could probably say that some of you in the room have not had dandelion greens and um, himica maybe forever. Uh, it's not a common food. So um, when you take a probiotic, you want to make sure that you have your prebiotic uh, with it. Um, the, when you have an out of um, balance probiotic uh, biotics, it can also include a lot of skin um, issues and other issues that are not digestive, um, such as dental cavities, um, diabetes, hardening of the arteries. So you can see why having a good balance of your um, microbiome is very, very important for your overall health. Um, what destroys your gut my microbiome? When you look at this list, you think, I think I need this every day. And I would say, yes, you need to take probiotics every day. Um, toxins in our air on uh, soil affect the microbiome. Medications. When you take an over-the-counter medication, it can kill all the good bacteria. Antibiotics, steroids, um, ge genetically modified foods, and chronic stress can all destroy our microbiome flora. Diet soda, um, I just want to put this out there that I hope none of you are drinking diet soda. Um, the American Heart Association has confirmed 
If you're drinking one diet soda a day, you have a 2.89 times increase of Alzheimer's disease and a 2.96 increase of stroke. Who would want to drink that? I don't even know why the FDA approved it, uh, um, obviously. It, it's just not a good food. So um, our Nerium uh, Youth Factor Prolistic, um, the Prolistic is so unique because it comes in a powdered form. So one of the problems with a probiotic is that because of, you know, I talked about all that pH balance, um, most probiotics, by the time they make the stomach, they get through the stomach acid, they're mostly destroyed. So it never makes it into the small and large intestine. Our prolistic powder is a sublingual. So you put it in your mouth and you let it um, melt in your mouth. It's very tasty. You can swirl it around. Um, it absorbs very readily into the mouth and it stays very stable. Um, two months ago, I had my microbiome tested and two of the most prolific bacteria in my uh, microbiome were the bifidus and the um, acidophilus. So I know that my prolistic is working to keep my gut really, really healthy. It all, it's also very tasty. It doesn't have to be refrigerated and um, every age can use it. Even a baby could use it. If a baby has thrush, you could give them a little bit of prolistic or a senior that can't swallow, um, they can use this as well. And I absolutely love this product and it's very reasonably priced. That's another big benefit um, to the product. Um, now our other product that is gonna be beneficial for not only your gut, um, but also your, um, your digestion is our Youth Factor Powder. This is another um, product that is a powdered form and this you mix with in a uh, water. So it's just one package for eight ounces of water and it mixes very, very readily. So let me talk about the digestive aspect of this first. So um, this product has two patent pending ingredients. Um, one is called the endo one for beta xylanase and then one is the D-gluconase. These are patent pending enzymes that are very beneficial for breaking down of foods into their form, which can be absorbed. Um, what youth factor powder is made up, if it's fruits and vegetables, now fruits and vegetables um, contain what they call polyphenols, and polyphenols create antioxidants. So um, think about that banana again, it's on our counter. When that banana is broken down, it absorbs and converts into um, energy um, when it's in our gut. And so taking the Youth Factor powder is going to give you more digestive enzymes and it's going to give your body to, uh, the ability to break down and assimilate those polyphenols. So when you drink one of these a day, it's like having three or four servings of fruits and vegetables um, that's highly, highly absorbable. So this is one of our favorite nutritional supports because bo our body's uh, nutrition when you eat something, it converts into energy. So people report that they feel more energetic, their hair is growing back, their fingernails are growing strong, their immune systems are um, fighting off, and they're just all around healthier. And it's because they're getting almost like pre-digested nutrition that is going directly to cell generation. Also, our youth, pa uh, youth uh, factor powder is um, very alkaline. So if you do have a diet that has occasional refined carbohydrates and you have an overacidic diet, the youth factor really helps to pa uh, balance our pH and give us more alkalinity in our system. So this is a powerhouse product, again, very reasonably priced, delicious. Um, kids love it. You can even make um, little popsicles out of it or um, serve it to a senior, a uh, very, very convenient a super, super vitamin powder. Um, when I utilize my Miriam protocol, um, I don't take a, a multiple vitamin. I add a few other nutrients like my fish oil and other um, more specific digestive enzymes, but these two powerhouse ingredients really um, take care of having to take a multiple product. So just to kind of wrap up where we've gone today in digestion, when you're happy on the inside, when your digestion is working better, you're gonna be happy on the outside. So digestion is the one key to a really, really healthy and happy life. And when your digestion is hampered for any reason, 
your overall health is going to start to diminish. So keeping a good digestive system is gonna really, really work. So get to know your own digestion and um, live a long and happy life. And um, for those of you that are interested in knowing more about how a Miriam International can offer you some support for your issues, uh, be sure to ask the person who brought you here today and they can give you more information on that. But I wanna thank you so much for your attention and hopefully um, this has stimulated you to think about um, looking more into your own personal issues. Uh, Google some of the things that I talked about today and um, start 2019 um, being happy on the inside with a really great nutrition program. Thanks so much.